Before we write a function that takes in a function, uh, let's go ahead and quickly think about and talk about signatures and some little things that come up when writing the signature for a function that which takes in or returns another function. Okay, so go down to continue where you were in the notes. Um, so think of uh, the sort function in Racket. It takes in a list and the comparison function returns another list. Okay, so I could just sort of say, well, first of all, the sort, uh, we have this generic variable. So uh, it takes in a list of, well, it could be a list of numbers, could be a list of strings, could be a list of uh, Powerpuff Girl objects, uh, whatever you like. Um, and so we'll say that, hey, it takes in any, a list of alpha. And it's going to return a list that also contains alpha. Alpha is a type variable. Uh, and in Java, by the way, they often use angle bracket T or angle bracket E to represent these type variables. So it's a variable. Uh, alpha might be equal to string, or maybe we'll come back later and call sort, and alpha might be equal to natural number, or alpha might be equal to something else. Okay. So, great. Um, the thing that I want to point out is if I'm asking on a homework or an exam for the, the signature of this of sort, uh, you can't just say function. It takes in a list of alpha and a function and returns a list of alpha because the question is, well, what sort of function is allowed? Is any function allowed? No, it can't be any function. It has to be a function that if we have, say, two numbers, takes two numbers and returns what? A boolean. Yeah, so what should we go? We're going to go ahead and I'm going to put in parentheses here. Something, something, arrow, something. Uh, what does this function, this comparison function, what's the take in and what's the return? Go ahead and pause and think about it. Okay, good. So we already said it returns a Boolean. And what does it take in? Could be anything, right? Well, it has to be the same thing that's in the list, the same type that's in the list. So I'll go and use alpha. So it takes in an alpha and an alpha and returns a Boolean. That is the type of the second thing that you must pass to sort something of this type. Okay, that's all, all there is to it. Um, it's traditional in many languages and in programming language courses to use Greek letters, alpha and beta for types. Like I said, we'll see in a moment uh, doing this in Java. Um, let's look at another example that you think about this. So the function map. Okay, there's, I'll call it my map just because there's already a built-in function map, but um, Here's what I want map to do, uh, and it's similar to a problem we had in the homework earlier. Give me a list, and I, I picture it as giving me a list and give me some sort of mallet. And I'm going to walk down the list and bam, 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 hit everything in the list with a mallet and return the list of all the results, okay, all the squashed elements or something. I don't know. Um, so here's an example, my map. The list will be the numbers 3, 2, and 4. Uh, my mallet is going to be the square function. So apply square to 3 to get 9. Square of 2 is 4, and square of 4 is 16. So we end up with list of 9, 4, 16. Okay. Um, and by the way, uh, we just talked about anonymous functions. So I could sort of say this is a map is an awesome example where I want to pass in a function. I don't want to bother naming it. Maybe square was already had a built-in name. But say I want to just triple the number and add 1. Okay, for whatever reason. I have the list of grades of homeworks from students, and I want to go and triple everybody's score and add one to it. Okay, um, okay great. Call map and pass it this function here. This function highlighted in orange is the function that takes in one thing, call it n, and returns 3n plus 1. Okay, map that orange function onto the list containing 3, 2, and 4. Triple 3 and add 1 to get 10. Triple two and add one to get seven. Triple four and add one to get thirteen, and that's why that's our expected result. Okay, so map is a very um, routine function, and just one more example. Here's an example of my map of string length. Um, so give, give me a list of strings, and now map string length. Uh, string length of gamma is five. String length of alpha is five. String length of epsilon is seven and beta 4. Okay, so we'll write that uh, in a moment uh, in the next video, but what is the signature for map?
go ahead and pause and sit down. Don't just say I'm going to watch the screen and look at the answer in a second. No, pause right now and try to write down on paper, on computer, or whatever. Try to write down the signature of map. Okay, so I trust you really did. Um, okay, so what is the signature for, for map? Uh, Again, in rack, it'd say something like, I'll call it my map, but it, it takes in, well, it takes in a function. So again, what you can't just write is you can't just say function and list and return this list. So first of all, a list of what? It takes in a list of, well, it could be a list of some particular type, so I can certainly go ahead and do that. Um, there we are. Control backslash, we'll take a backslash alpha to the alpha character. Okay, so yeah, give me give me a list of alpha, and then you might think, okay, so return a list of alpha. Now, what should this function be? Again, you can't just say function. You have to tell me the type of the function. What does it take in, and what does it return? So first of all, how many things does the mallet, if, this, if I call this function the mallet, um, how many things do you have to give to the mallet? Just one. I gave gamma to the function string length, or I gave three to the function square, or I gave three to this function here, okay? A function that only had one input, okay? So it takes in one thing, and what is that type? What is the type of that one input? Oh, well, it has to be whatever, so the thing's coming from my list, and if I have a list of alpha, then it will go ahead and be alpha. Control backslash, okay. And what does it return? So now it's not alpha, and what I have written here is a little bit wrong as well. You spot them error. If alpha equal string, well, look at this example here. Uh, I have a list of strings. Yeah, yeah, give it alphas is could be string, and I give it this list of string. Um, what does string length do? And a string length takes in a string but returns not another string. It might return, or string length does return a number. Ah, so the type isn't alpha. Square happens to take in a number and return a number, and the three n plus one does the same. But uh, in general, we say, hey, it's going to be some other type, beta. Okay. And so now let's fix this all up. What is my actual return type? I get back a list of beta. So this last example sort of illustrated, I gave it a list of strings and actually got back a list of numbers. Why the mallet function took in one string and gave back one number, and I took that mallet and hit everything in the input list and I collected all the results. Okay, cool. Um, now, I just put this in comments in my racket code, and that's what you'll do for the homework. Uh, if you want to go and look at contracts, I have a, there's some, I have some notes on that. Uh, you can actually specify this as part of an actual racket contract and have it checked at runtime. Um, but even if I'm writing in JavaScript or Python or something else, uh, if I'm writing in an untyped language, I will absolutely include the contract uh, with these things. It might just be in a, com a comment, the signature. Uh, but still, give the signature for all your functions. Even if it's not a typed language, it's still really important you write that down because somebody else looking at this will want to know, need to know that information. Okay, but what about something like Java? Uh, in Java, we can't just make up the, um, the syntax because we're in a comment, so I can't just sort of say, hey, I'll go ahead and say A arrow B and list of alpha or something like that. So in Java, I need to be a little bit more formal so what does map do? Map takes in a list of some type. And again, what is racket, or sorry, what is job for a list of some type? I won't use alpha, I'll use T, a list of T. It's just idiomatic. I could use alpha. U uh, Unicode characters can be used in your Java code, Java variables. Um, and again, when I say that T is a variable, I mean T is a type variable. It's not a variable at the level of your program. You're never going to assign to that variable on line 17 of your program. It is a type variable. T will stand for some particular type when you get around to actually calling this. Okay. Takes in a list of T, and then we need a function here. A function that takes in one type and returns another. Okay, so what should I write here? Um, well, it turns out... So I have to give something that's an actual Java type. 
and Java just has classes. Well, Java 8 added some classes there. One of the classes it added was a class function. In fact, class function is a parameterized class. It takes in something like that is what I'll write. A function, so yeah, so to get this to work in Java, they needed to add this new type, this new class, class function, and say, hey, a function that takes in one type and returns another type, takes in type T and returns a type R. Hey, something, some functions will type check as function of TR, and other functions will not type check as that when you try to compile your Java program. Um, and again, there might be a bonus video on how this was done in Java before they added, added this to Java 8, and equivalently, what's going on under the hood in Java? What is this class function, and what, is, what are its fields or methods or method singular? We'll get to that. Okay, but my point is, yeah, uh, you'll see in Java, uh, people will go ahead and write. You know, you actually need to give the signature as runnable code, and that would be the... That's not quite the signature for map, so it turns out map is in... Um, is in Java. Uh, it's inside class stream. So inside class stream, they have the func they have map, and it's a member function um, method. So it takes in a stream implicitly. This if you want to, you can try to make it explicit there, or whatever. Uh, takes in a stream. This and then it takes in a function. A function that takes in a T and returns an R. And in the docs, I pasted this out of the docs, they call that mapper. Okay. Uh, what gets returned from stream.map? Another stream, a stream of the result type. So it takes in a, give me a stream of T's, I guess I should be, there, okay. Um, give me a stream of T's and I'll return you a stream of R's by mapping. Okay. So. Uh, that is the actual Java. Um, I have the links there if you want to easily go there. Um, the one thing here I'm just going to gloss over. I'm not going to talk about this. It's worth more discussion, uh, but not at this moment. Uh, they actually write something question mark super T. I think it should just be, you know, or put it this way, this is what I'm thinking of, a function from T to R, okay? But they actually write this. Do, do, do. Why is that? Suppose we have a... Um, a stream of, uh, what's this, something that has a, a subtype here, um, strings don't easily, well, there's, there's class number, you may not know this, there's a class number in Java, and double and integer are both subclasses of number, okay? So suppose I say, I have a, a, a stream of doubles, okay? And you're going to call map, and you're going to give map a function, and the function could take in doubles, but maybe it takes in other things as well. Maybe it can take in any capital N number, something that is a super class of double. That would be fine, right? I mean, map will have no problem with that. Map, you'll give it a function, and it will, the, that mallet, and it will apply it to every single element, every single double in your list. And if that function, as long as that function can process a double, it's okay if it processes even more things. So give me something that is a super class of T. And that's what this means. The question mark just makes it anonymous. We're not going to introduce another name there. So something is a super class of T. And what about this? It returns a, a function that takes in a, a double or better or more. And it's going to return, say I'm doing square root. Um, and I say, hey, or, you know, again, st you know, string length, something like that. Um, if I say, hey, I'm going to go ahead and return um, this mapper function uh, needs to be something that returns an R, and it actually returns subclasses of R. So you're supposed to actually return numbers, and actually you are just returning capital I integers all for a particular call. Yeah, that doesn't bother map. Map says, hey, as long as you're returning a list of numbers, even if there are subclasses of number, that's okay. My contract still is good. So we have these bounds. This is a um, an upper bound on T. T it has to be you have T and you have to have, you'll have something above it, and then a lower bound on R. Hey, we'll return an R, um, but it might be something uh, can't, can't be bigger than R. It has to be below R, a subclass of R. So don't worry too much about that. 
you'll Google it, uh, you'll get good compiler messages suggesting you say things like that if you need it. But morally, this is what we have. Okay, so you can actually put down your signatures as actual code in Java. Okay, now let's get to the good part. Next video, let's actually write a function that takes in a function and see how that works. And it's going to be pretty straightforward, fortunately.